things like degrowth and really radical behavior change, consumption change, isn't that necessary to change the, the narrative and actually really get, I mean, 28 years, that's nothing. We have to transform everything from our food to our industry to our housing to our mobility, everything. We cannot, I mean, energy efficiency is key, isn't that? But don't we really also need to talk about this other one? But yeah, I really liked how you linked the, the, the energy efficiency to how important it is, but that it cannot be just this tiny, tiny thing. Well, thank you for this comment. I, um, uh, 20 years ago, when we studied the uh, Association de Gaguen, we were the first, I think, to introduce the notion of uh, sufficiency, sobriety, that energy efficiency was not enough. Uh, but we are only starting now to shape that into a um, concrete proposal, policy. Uh, there is a network of researchers now in Europe dedicated uh, their, the pick to that. It's called Enough, the Enough Network. And, uh, and yes, the notion of degrowth is not far away, but frankly, we avoid. I avoid to talk about degrowth. I prefer to insist on the positive side. I, prosper, uh, I want this world to be prosper. I'm into prosperity. I want to be, I want people to like each other, to love, to, uh, that's what counts. What counts the most in this world, art, education, love, friendship, has no value, has no value. And we bury ourselves because of uh, this uh, huge uh, problem of climate change and uh, lack of uh, common understanding of, uh, so, so uh, there's a human bug. By the way, there is a very good uh, report, uh, report explaining the paralytic mindset that we have. But this is very deep inside. We always go for the short-term solution. We have no glasses to, to go far away. And, and, and we have a, there's a, a, um, a, a serious uh, a problem in our mind. In, uh, there's a bug. Uh, all what I said about uh, energy can also, there is a whole uh, presentation about food and agriculture and there are many links to, uh, we have to feed ourselves because of the, uh, at the end of the day what we need is to uh, be happy, uh, to have a, a, a roof and to have to eat. To it. And, and uh, yes, uh, when we look at uh, climate change, the other angle of climate change is uh, food and land use. And there's a whole scenario you can invite yeah, after. Yeah, just, just one word about, I mean, to answer your question, because the Negawatt Association has also worked with another association working on agriculture. They try really to have a comprehensive scenario integrating both energy, uh, uh, agriculture, food, uh, etc. So and I think within the the presentation of Negawatts at yep. the end of the month, we will at least talk a little bit about that. Uh, thank you very much again for this engaging and very understandable presentation. I wanted to ask about uh, the potential for big data to contrib contribute to energy efficiency. Potential for? Uh, big, big data, data to contribute big, yeah. to energy efficiency because in the article that was provided to us, you talked about how they can, like, it can be used to manage uh, energy efficiency in the cities and how uh, they can potentially take the data and then process the information. I wanted to ask about, like, considering what we have now, um, uh, I want to understand how you see it and how, like, the implementation of it and like, who is going to manage it? How is it going to be like? I, I, um, there's a lot of controversy on big data and digitalization of this world. And I have uh, been involved in some serious uh, study for the ministry these days. And I admit that uh, we have a problem with big data, but I think we can make use of big data and digitalization. It could be, um, we, we can really make it, um, uh, this can make a big difference. Just. Many people, many of us, businesses, municipalities, individuals, we don't know where to start from because we just don't have the data in front of us. I understand that big data, just in the way we consume, it is possible to provide each of us every day the amount of carbon that we emit every day. It is possible, I know. I know it is possible because whenever you make a purchase or when you, because you know we are, well, uh, 
everywhere you go, you know, uh, uh, the machine knows, this knows. So, so the, uh, big data, I don't want to go too far in that direction, but I know that what is missing to help in the decision process could that be a municipality, an individual, even the dirty guy, some bad companies, they, they have no idea. So they put some white, some green paint sometimes in, in, in some of the activity, but they had no idea. And even if I, I, I refuse to use uh, billions or millions of tons. I don't know what is a ton, you know. I prefer to talk about kilogram and, because this is more easier for, for us to, to understand. And big data can help us gather at the speed of light data that will be necessary. You cannot expect someone a, a, a pilot of a plane to land without any 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 what, what will uh, ra radar or any um, how do you call that winch uh, no, dashboard without a dashboard you cannot drive okay and I think we are all like that we are totally blind and we know where we need to land now with this notion of climate change and I think big data can help us shape this dashboard with the right indicators at the individual level, at the level of a society, of communities, of businesses. I don't blame even some of the dirty guys because they don't have that. So the first step is to make some assessments and big data can help a great deal. Big data can also help in the complex energy system we're going to have because now the energy system will be decentralized. We're going to collect wind and solar energy and stuff like that. But now we have to have the right balance between what we consume and what we produce. And big data can also help a great deal here. There's fast development. You have heard about energy storage. I don't know if uh, this alone could be a, a lecture by itself, how to develop storage of electricity, because uh, it is a, a new solution that we need. But before thinking about storage, the right balancing and big data can help us do that at the speed of light. Big data, uh, one last example. Oh, there is one negative example with big data. Is big data, <laughs> the ministry don't tell that, but um, I'm not very comfortable. In my ministry, they are focused on the autonomous vehicle. Autonomous vehicle, you know, self-driving vehicle. And without big data, you cannot, uh, this cannot work. But this is where I have some, uh, I am fully in favor of using, making use of big data at all level, but I know that some people think that uh, big data can be great for pushing us for more mobility and, and, and uh, there's uh, they some opposition. So anyway, let's be vi vigilant, let's be, uh, let's be careful. Uh, Thank you very much for all the insights. Um, so my question will be on the, on the topic of behavioral change. How can we boost this? Because one of my ideas is like from the production side, uh, it makes sense from the productive uh, sphere and structure to, for example, start only to produce this kind of cars that you showed, these gas cells that is more efficient. I don't know if it's cheaper. The house you showed, it was like cheaper at the end to build it, but what about cars and like everyday electrodomestic we would need in this sense. But I'm trying to think about how can we change consumer patterns in a more, uh, from a policy making perspective or from institutions, because it's easy to, to say, okay, we can do a dictatorship of needs and say, okay, now every family has only one car and can drive only once a day, I don't know. But how can we make this in a timely fashion that we need it, uh, because through education it's like a very nice answer, but it also like takes a lot of awareness that it seems that in this society we don't have about long term and the glasses that you said. So yeah, like this will be my difficult question. Uh, yes, um, all this notion of uh, lifestyle change and behavior is very complex, it's fairly new. I uh, believe that there's a big room of improvement vis-a-vis -vis commercial and advertisement. I think uh, this really goes in the wrong direction. So there's got to be a, a way for government to uh, introduce, um, to, to, um, to frame better and to impose maybe uh, uh, some limit to the, the, the current, uh, the, the way the advertisement is uh, imposing us to consume more. Uh, 
we can change also behavior. Um, a lot can be done from a, a policy standpoint, from a decision at local level. Look at mobility. Mobility is changing very rapidly. This is where an example where big data is helping sustainable mobility. I don't know if you ever blah blah car. I don't know if you use blah blah car. Blah blah car ten years ago didn't exist, and that was made possible because of digitalization. And, and suddenly, you have a possibility. You have uh, you can travel in a faster way, uh, cheaper way, um, and. and the notion of ownership of a car is changing, I think, also. Um, uh, I, I work at the ministry. I'm, in a, I'm part of the Directorate for Mobility. And, uh, and there's a lot of thinking of mobility. And uh, uh, things are, I, I can change fast. Look at the way the VELIP system has developed, you know, uh, in many, many places. I don't know how many cities in France and in Europe have such system. And this is part of, uh, the, without big data, that was not possible. Now with big data, it is possible to manage such a complex system. And, and, and once you introduce a system of uh, co-sharing of bikes and uh, stuff like that, I think you can change behavior. I don't know how many of you use a Velib every day. You know, certainly save all, yeah. And um, uh, I don't know how many of you have uh, a driving license. Have, uh, among you, uh, all of you, uh, do you all have a driving license? So maybe those who don't have a driving license raise their hand. Yeah, it is significant. I have three kids. Only one, <laughs> my daughter, has a driving license. My son, they don't have a driving license, not yet. And they don't suffer. They, 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 they don't suffer. They, but we live in a, in a big, we live in Paris. That's a, live in a big city. That's right. That's right. But, but um, lifestyle change, never spontaneous. We don't change behavior just because we heard nice lectures somewhere or we a nice TV show. No, you, you have to have an enabling environment. And this is where we need to have the policy level. We have to have uh, the solution. And this is where digitalization can help. But also uh, uh, governments, local government, national government have to put in place some uh, specific program structure. This, uh, this is a, a public decision. So anyway, uh, not an easy uh, solution, behavior change, but very necessary. I wish I could tell you more. Okay. okay, thank you. It's just more like a follow-up on, on this discussion. So in my own view, I would say um, behavioral change could be a bit difficult if the structure remains the same. And what is the structure, like you already said, like um, if they still um, present to us the same fossil fuel cars and everything, then we definitely know that energy efficiency would not work. So yes, the question, what if you know, we are in the capitalist world and we are trying to change the status quo, but it's not still like working, working. So what if um, there is increased private investment in um, energy efficiency products, would the narrative change? Say that to get your last part of the question. Okay, I'm just like, um, what if there is increased investment in um, energy efficiency products by this and private investor or the capitalists? Would the narrative change? Would their uh, like, would people's behavior like, would it change? Because you know, we are left to getting what we see in the market. I, I, I think I separate what is energy efficiency, what belongs to energy efficiency, and what belongs to. Uh, behavior change and lifestyle change. I think it's a, we, we have to have the two together. And it's a different type of intervention, different type of uh, policy. Uh, uh, energy efficiency can be more a technical response through policy. Behavior change is where the human factor comes. And this is why we have this human bug here that doesn't help. But it's a different part of response. Like for behavior change, uh, there's something that we understand is money. The value of uh, what is a euro, a dollar, we understand that. And we know that as long as uh, we don't have the right signal. When we pollute, we don't pay for the pollution. 
when we emit those 20 to 30 kilograms of greenhouse gas of, uh, per day, uh, we don't pay for it. We, we, we don't pay, and, and we know that there will be a huge consequence and there will be a cost to society. And um, government trying to impose a carbon tax, this is part of putting in place the enabling government to change, to improve the behavior. But it's very, very complex. In France, we have almost a revolution two years ago called the Gilet Jaune. I don't know, you were not yet in France maybe, but we had some serious trouble in the streets because the government imposed, uh, tried to introduce a carbon tax and that was just enough that people couldn't uh, stand. And, and that was a wrong move from the government because um, we, need, we need to have this price signal. We need to accept the role of a tax especially uh, on pollution and, and you see this is not a technical solution this is not energy efficiency but this is part of what can help us behave differently this is this dashboard that we need in front of us to help take decision the notion of uh, costs of price of uh, environmental degradation can play a big role uh, so anyway i don't have an exact answer but that's uh, what comes to mind? And I think part of the question was also that uh, do you think that the world you are dreaming of is possible in a cap capitalist economy? <sighs> like a simple question, yes. <laughs> I, 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 you have two minutes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I like to say that climate change is not. Uh, caused by human beings is caused by capitalism. Climate change is a consequence of capitalism. So now that we are facing a big challenge caused climate change, yes, we have to revisit what makes uh, our society uh, work together and uh, there are some fundamental rules that we have to revisit uh, and the rules of capitalism, yes. This is part of the, 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 the challenge here. Uh, they, 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 as long as it is profitable to uh, make environmental damage that you don't pay for that, uh, this world is uh, not going to solve much. Yes. Okay, one last question. No? Ah, yes, one last question. Hi, thank you for the lecture. It was very insightful. Um, I was wondering here, like, um, energy efficiency take uh, lots of uh, years of research and development uh, investments, right? And um, how do you see the, the technology gap that may this energy efficiency may entail? Because I'm thinking about uh, some leading energy companies in my home country, Brazil. Like they are privatized companies that actually charge very, very well for this, for this new high-tech efficiency solutions. So I was wondering if you have an intake on that, if there are um, ways of cooper cooperations, so this does not become um, a factor that enhances inequality. I think we have all the technical solutions already um, on our shelves. We know all the solutions for all the companies. It is complex. But yes, you are right that uh, sometimes there is some um, technology that are proprietary. They belong to uh, some companies and they are making use of that. And uh, it's like the vaccine, you know, uh, available to some countries and not to other countries. And this, there is something wrong. Um, this is where the role of government is fundamental. I, um, uh, in this market economy, in this capitalistic world, I believe that we need to uh, reinforce democracy. We need to reinforce the role of uh, government, national, but also local government, because we are in the same boat and uh, we cannot just afford that uh, a solution exists, but is only for the rich or for some category, we have to learn how to bring that uh, to, 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 to the whole society. And um, um, uh, as part of, um, uh, as soon as we touch 
NH, if you see, there is the notion of governance that, is, that comes next. Because without some go 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 governing body uh, developing some common ground for a common vision, yeah, energy efficiency will remain marginal and the solution will remain marginal. To make it mainstream, we have to uh, indeed have uh, this uh, policy, this enabling environment. We have to have this common price, this common taxes, this common redistribution. And, and uh, as I try to explain, energy efficiency is part of the knowledge economy. So as, as long as we don't invest in the knowledge, uh, we are unlikely to see the, the, the impact that we, that we need to see. So anyway, the notion of governance, yes. But I believe that um, uh, all the technical solutions exist. We still have to uh, accept some public money to invest in, win in uh, research and development. We never know. We, you know, blah, blah, car develop very fast. We may face some very fast development on some sector and we need to encourage innovation at all levels and the role of government to do that is also important there. Yeah, and part of the answer to, to that question and, and to that of Eloisa is, is in the me megawatt scenario, uh, I mean the scenario is based on existing technologies and yes. it goes up to zero net emission uh, in the time frame that, that absolutely show. so it's still possible with the existing technology it doesn't mean that we cannot do maybe we can do better but at least we can uh, absolutely if, if we take some political decision on time yeah. okay is there any qu other question otherwise I really want to thank you Benoit thank you very much thank you, thank you.